So we're finally on to the last PowerPoint. So this is B10 stereochemistry in biomolecules. Now I've had a little bit of trouble finding any decent uh, amount of questions on the last couple of papers. And so I'm gonna take that in mind. I'm also going to uh, not try not to repeat stuff that's within this other B1 to 9 section. And so we should already know that amino acids are chiral and the configurations in L. I will cover that again in this section. We've also talked about cis and trans, but I'll talk about that again slightly. This one about D and Ls in, in uh, sugars is new and also where to find them, how to how to recognize them. And there's also a quite technical thing on, on retinol that we'll cover. Uh, this one has been done before, I'll touch on. This one I'm not going to cover at all. So the structure and properties of cellulose in comparison with starch was done quite in quite detail of what you need to know in standard level. So go back to carbohydrates to touch on that. Again, that's, that's the same thing there. And this is the same thing, vision over here. And just a note, relative melting points, it was covered. I'll touch on it again. Uh, you don't need to know the names of the enzymes. So I just thought I'd cover that just so we're not repeating too much. And so basically this unit overall has a lot of memorization but not a lot of questions on the test. This is just a revision. So structural isomers are completely different chemicals. They just, they are attached in completely different ways. The stereoisomers, there are different spatial arrangements, uh, generally the same sort of chemical. Uh, and so these ones here, they can spin around. So if you have a a C and then there's like a another C and there's a H there and an OH uh, that can spin around so this can be an OH and that can be a H uh, so nothing major there what we really care about is conformational isomerism and so this is a repeat of the high level so cis trans and optical isomers so that's with the chiral carbon so moving past that uh, now you have to the new thing for this one is you have to be able to tell the difference between a D and an L. And so you have to point the hydrogen away from you and then you have to tell whether using this corn rule and I, even that, even though you know corn rule, you've still got to remember that clockwise is a D and anti-clockwise is an L. So it's a lot to, to sort of try and work out how to remember that one. I don't have one for you at the moment. So um, you can leave a comment or uh, somewhere about how to do that so I'm just going to swap to just another presentation to show how I do it. Alright so this is an amino acid and I'm just going to pick out uh, the chiral carbon. So this is the chiral carbon here because I have the hydrogen here and NH2 there. So blue is always nitrogen, red is always oxygen, black is always carbon. So C double bond O C O H is here. So um, I get the hydrogen and I stick it away from me. And then I look for corn. Uh, so there's the CO, double bond O, CO, and then the R group and the N. So that's the corn like that. Uh, and that's anti-clockwise. Okay, so that is the L. Now taking the next one, looks very similar, uh, but it's not. Uh, just get rid of that one, throw it away. So here we have the chiral carbon again. Uh, and so I put the hydrogen, put it away from me. And so the C double bond O is over C. And then the uh, O, so the R, and then the N, nitrogen, which is always blue, and H2. Uh, and so corn this way, this one's clockwise. Uh, and so now this one must be the D isomer. Okay, this is a touch of revision as well. So this one here is the cis trans. So this is cis because they're both on the same side. Trans is when they're on the opposite. Uh, and so the, the thing is when you have an opposite, you have a kink. And if you have a kink, then these things don't line up close to each other like these strands and have they have very strong London dispersion forces and a high melting point, melting boiling point. This will have a kink in it so they can't line up. So like pencils, they'll have gaps uh, until they have a less, a lower melting point and boiling point. 
Okay, by the way, this is how you can hydronate them. And so this is revision nickel catalyst with hydrogen. That's a revision of your organic chem. All right, this one is a new one and a bit of a nasty one. So carbohydrates are a little bit different in amino acids in that they're D forms, not L forms. And you have to go and see where the most uh, senior or reactive important functional group is. And then you go all the way to the opposite end and off the second carbon and that's the chiral carbon. So you need to know that. So you probably just need to know D forms for carbohydrates and you, the chiral carbon is the second furthest away from the main main functional group. That's pretty nasty and I haven't seen a question on that to my memory. Moving on, this one I do have a video answer to. So this was in one of the latest papers, the last couple of papers. And so basically if it's a six membered ring, you need to look at the one and the six. That is trans, so that's an alpha. That's an alpha sugar. And these ones, the one on the six, they're both on the same side. So that's a beta. So if you go to a five carbon ring, this one's the first carbon. So that's a two six now. Still same deal. If it's the cis, it's a beta. If it's a trans, it's on the opposite side of the plane or opposite sides, um, it's of the uh, molecule then it's a trans and it's an alpha. Uh, this one too is particularly nasty to the point where I would not bother to be completely honest with you. So what happens is the cis and opsin join together to form this ro rhodopsin chemical and then light changes that particular cis into a trans and that pops off, these two pop off and that causes an electrical signal. I guess it's to appreciate that the, the optical isomers do have a function and are important. You can see the picture here where these two groups, these major two groups are on the same side, so they're cis, and here, these two major groups are on opposite sides, so they're trans. So interesting to note, but it's getting a little bit crazy on the detail and there doesn't seem to be much point in memorizing that. So I would resist that and take the very, 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 very tiny chance that that actually occurs in the test, which I wouldn't be too happy about if I saw. Um, and that's it. So best of luck. Make sure you do the all the, the little tests, the topic tests, and make sure you do the major tests as practice. And you should be good for your test. All right. All the best. Bye-bye.